as he said, maybe they weren't strong enough to be able to resist the temptations that arise in that reality because it's a very powerful place. Um, you know, they say that, you know, sex, power, influence, these money, these are some of the most powerful things in life that will derail your life quickly. This is Pastor Mark Reacts. We're back with Joe Rogan and we're talking about Christian celebrity. Is it legitimate? Oh, we get into trouble sometimes. All right, let's give it a go. But there was a guy that we've made fun of a bunch on the show who was a, a pastor Rogan to again. a lot of famous people. He was like the hip young pastor. We just got busted? Yeah, he just yeah, got busted. No, right. Banging some chick. Yeah. And we made fun of him because uh, I'm like, look, this guy's, there's no way this guy's religious. This is what I was saying. Well, because he was wearing these shorts that showed what I called his dick root. Hmm. Like he wears these shorts that go way low, which you just don't wear your shorts like that unless you want someone to think about your penis. Right. Like that's that's why you wear your shorts like that. Or maybe in the seventies it would be. <laughs> but I don't mean I don't, there's no reason to. Oh, gotcha. Right. Guys who wear their shorts that low, right. They're 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 being overtly sexual to people that they don't even necessarily know. Right. Mm -hmm. You you you're trying to, and you want everyone to look at your chiseled body. You know, like this is. None of the, there's a reason why monks dress in these like right. very modest clothes that cover everything. They don't even want to think about their body. Right. And um, that is a part of the religion of both celebrity and social media. Right. That this guy has got these traditional Christian ideas fused in with the religion of celebrity, That's in with the religion of social media. And then you're seeing that it doesn't really work. Because, you know, like, what, what's the reward for those, th those behaviors? <laughs> well, that, guy wants people to, that's, that guy wants people to lust after him, and uh, it, it wound up sabotaging him. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, so, so obviously I, I, I do my best to, uh, to not, you know, criticize other Christian leaders. I know how tough it is. And there's, I mean, and one of the things about this, I mean, there's lots to say about this, but one of the things he said at the end was, like, the reason that you're doing certain actions are because of this. And... I think it's really hard from the outside to be able to evaluate someone's motives accurately uh, in life. I think one of the things about kind of the present cancel culture, with I know, which I know Joe Rogan's against, is that there's a constant interpretation of someone's motives. I don't know what, you know, obviously walking around, I mean, I'm not defending in any way. Uh, what happened is a tragedy for, you know, Carl Lentz's family and for his church and all of that. Uh, and he, you know, there were certain actions that he did that set him up for that. And I think there's a valid conversation about celebrity impact. You know, there's this, I think there's this movement now in light of this called let's make pastors uncool again. And uh, you know, there's, there's a piece of that that uh, I have issue with, um, which I'll talk about in a second, but then there's another, which I, I kind of get the sentiment. It's like, let's uh, like, remember when the pastors were just old and ugly and irrelevant? <laughs> like, let's go back to that time because there, we had less, you know, problems. And I get kind of the sentiment of that, but you know, what we forget is that these, these are the stories we hear in regard to, you know, the kind of celebrity pastors. And what we forget is there's lots of pastors of churches of 200 in small little communities in Podunk, Missouri, who have the same uh, realities. Pastors who fall, pastors who sleep with people in their congregations, pastors who cheat on their wives and leave their families and all the rest of it. And um, we just don't hear about it. Pastors who in those churches become celebrities. So it's not always about the size of the church or the size, you know, the size of the Instagram account or whatever. There's, there, that, those become macrocosm things, but there's the microcosm is, events are still happening in these smaller settings. It's, it's this bigger issue about, you know, looking at someone like that who's putting themselves maybe in those scenarios and saying, does, because I think what we're supposed to do is of course we're supposed to put Christian leaders at a higher standard and people who have issue with that. Um, the reality is, is that the Bible tells us to do that. The book of James says teachers, for instance, are gonna be judged harsher. First Timothy chapter three, Titus chapter one, gives us a list of the character qualifications of an elder. You know, they're not to be after money, they're not to be, and then a deacon. So they're, they're, they're holding, uh, Paul's honing in on Christian leaders, saying there is a higher 
higher standard that Christian leaders need to actually be held to by the church and by their family and by themselves. And I think that's legitimate or else we can get into problems. And the problem when a leader falls is there's a trickle down that if a regular Christian in the church, it happens to them, it doesn't have as big an impact. And so there's this question of witness to the body of Christ and so on that's an issue and why Christian leaders legitimately need to be held to a higher standard, but then there also needs to be a recognition and it needs to happen and we need to hold it and we need to be sure of that. So all of that to say, and then, you know, Jesus, John 1 tells us Jesus was full of grace and truth. So the truth, we need to hold them to, but then there's a there's grace where we walk these people through this. If you read Gordon McDonald, my, my good friend, Josh Gagnon has a mentor who is a pretty famous guy. He was, uh, he was uh, an advisor to different presidents and he's still alive, he's in his mid eighties and he wrote a book called uh, Rebuilding Your Broken World and very important book for people who've made mistakes like Carl Lentz is, you know, in the middle, obviously, right now being exposed of. And he, one time, he, he cheated on his, his wife while he was a pastor. And it's about how do you rebuild that world? What's the accountability process? How do you ever continue on in ministry if that was to ever take place? And you see these examples where it was, it's done well and there can be restoration, there can be repentance, there can be rebuilding, there can be life on the other side of this because the gospel is not only about truth, but about grace at the same time at 100%. So I do think there's a very important conversation to be had about Christian celebrity, about what it can do. It is a it is a powerful vacuum that can you know suck you into it so easy so that you forget who you are, you forget who you're serving, and that becomes your God, that becomes your idol, that becomes the thing, and it's dangerous. And it might be a reason why we gotta be very careful to not let it go to pastor's heads because you know there's something addictive about the limelight and the influence and I'm hanging out with you know, it's funny for me, I've never been all that into like the celebrity thing. I mean, I'm I'm not a guy who go, my buddy I remember at a grocery store one day, he was like, Hey, here's a famous golfer, Fred Couples, you know, which some of you might know and some of you might know, but take my picture with him. And I was like, No, I'd see I'd rather I'd rather honestly sit at home and probably read a you know, a book about Churchill than to hang with the Beebs. I love you, Beebs. Uh, but it's like, not, and so there's this impulse that we always have to bring before the Lord and go, let me not chase down these things. Now, there's, there's a piece of it where his heart is, hey, celebrities need Jesus too, right? And that's that's a legitimate impulse. And of course they do. But as, as one guy who was writing about this, this case recently said, you know, nine times out of 10, when Christian leaders try to influence in that way, my life ends up influencing them more than they influence me. It just seems like they wanna become a Christianized version of me as an atheist guy who's living in pop culture. And that's the critique that, that Rogan's kind of putting on the table. Now, is Rogan's solution that Carl Lentz should wear a robe and walk around as a monk? Uh, is that the solution? Um, there are Christians who think that and they end up, there's all kinds of streams of the conversation about Christ and culture. I'm not even talking about leadership now, just the church, Christianity, and how it engages with culture is a fascinating one. There's a spectrum, a, a scholar named uh, Niebuhr uh, pointed out five different versions of this, everything from Christ of culture to Christ against culture and everything in between. And uh, I think it's a fascinating conversation where we have to figure out probably a way, Jesus didn't want us to come out of the world. He said, you're in the world, but not of it. And how we live that balance, not even as a pastor or a leader. You know, it's how many people are sitting around, you know, who've done nothing with their life. They just love to criticize Christians and a lot of Christians are like this and they sit behind their little keyboard and they criticize leaders who are trying to do something and all they do is critique 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 them and it's like what have you done recently you know and we got to be careful not that we fall into that trap but that we honor and that we hold to a standard and we figure out the balance of being following Jesus in the midst of a culture that's constantly pressuring us to become like it rather than it become like us there's a drug and so there there's several drugs that are mixed together in sort of a concoction there's a drug of celebrity which uh you know for sure is a drug and then there's also a drug at being the person who has the answers definitely and there's yeah. something that people do when they convince other people that they have the answers that it elevates their mood and their perspective there's like some weird guru drug yeah. Yeah. So there's the guru drug, and then there's <laughs> the a celebrity, celebrity drug. drug. We're, we're identifying a whole nexus of drugs. And <laughs> with that guy, it was the sex drug, because he's a beautiful no. man. He's a handsome, tall, ripped, yeah. shredded preacher guy. Right, right, right. So a lot of drugs going on there. Well, hey, 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 do you see what you're doing? Because I see what you're doing. Right. The psychedelics would have said, I know what you're doing. You're pretending. You're right. pretending to be profound. You're pretending to be pious. You're pretending to be enlightened. 
You're pretending to be above it all, but you're not. Yeah. That's actually part of what the gospel would say is in, in the end, you're not above it. You are just one of us in the sense of humankind and the ability for a leader not to forget they're not a god to realize that as much as people are gonna they don't see who you really are you know people can see you from a stage and think you're all that they don't know who you really are and oftentimes what happens is you have uh, people who who connect with one another but, but they're only together in social you know certain social places like let's say you you um, the only time you ever see this particular woman is at parties so you're constantly looking at her at the party she's dressed up you're always got a drink you're always hanging out you're always laughing if that's the only context you see them then you start to get attracted to them and oftentimes you know adultery or affairs or whatever happen in those contexts because that's the only context you see them you don't see them in the regular normal part of life before they run out of bed and they're all scr- you know whatever are scraggly and not right you know so if someone sees a preacher and someone the only the Instagram only the Facebook only this persona they're gonna think the best of you and you start to then believe it because now the the the, the cycle of feedback is in the loop is always positive it starts to feed your soul and some people they just can't handle it and it tips into an immoral life because they think they're above it and what he just said what Joe just said is true you're one of us you need the grace of Jesus you need the gospel to be true about you and be very careful to think that you're more than you are. Look, growing up outside the church, a pastor was not a, a, a big deal to me. I've never thought of it as a, as a bigger job than it is. I'll honor it, I think it's great, whatever, but I don't look at it like, you know, that big a deal. I look at my friends who run businesses or teachers or plumbers or whatever, and we're all doing the same thing. You know, um, we're doing, we're trying to do it in a Christian way. We're trying whatever, and uh, and to, to you know, to not. I, I have friends who grew up in the church, and the pastor would, you know, they call him pastor. You know, pastor is here. Pastor is coming for dinner. You know, and it's like this culture. Like, where did you get that word? Like, he has a name. Um, and 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 he'd be he'd be a kid, and he'd be in the foyer, and pastor would walk by, and you could hear it, and feel it, and everyone would turn and be like this big, like. We just gotta be, I get it, we wanna honor, we wanna love, we just have to be very careful because historically speaking, even look at the last five or six years, some big, you know, pastor names that have had a lot of influence and done a lot of great things, um, their ministries have been destroyed by exactly this and you gotta go back and see what, what's the root system, that where it actually comes from. I think that's one of the things, they forget that they are just one of us and they need, they aren't anything bigger than any other Joe. Um, and we need to, you know, in a sense, remind them of that. And I, that's why I love my family and my friends, because they remind me of that all the time. It's like, dude, you're not a big deal. And I'm like, yeah, you're definitely right. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that video. Please leave comments. Let us know you loved it. Let us know you hated it. Let us know you were in the middle about it and barely paid attention to it. We don't care. Just leave a comment and like it and share it. I'm glad you're watching these. Pastor Mark reacts. Let us know what you want me to react to next. Thanks, guys. Thank mm-hmm. you.